Welcome to the Finding Sessions podcast, where I believe that having an open mind and a willingness to be honest with ourselves can open up new doors of possibility. Please join me as I share my meditative thoughts with you. Recently, while journaling, I came to the realization that many of my decisions in life were based on some feeling or inner dialogue telling me, you should do this. And so I did. But over the last few months, I've been learning that sometimes when you tell yourself you should be doing something, you use the word should because you're resisting it. Because perhaps in your heart, you don't really want to do it. When you really want to do something and you're not resisting it, you usually say something like, I'm doing this or I want to do this. So when you find yourself saying that you should do something, sometimes it's worth asking, why do you feel you should? Taking that pause and asking yourself can sometimes provide clarity as to whether it's really the right decision. In this episode, I talk about how telling ourselves that we should do something often leads us to many of our decisions and actions. There are those you shoulds that may serve us well, and there are those that are the creation of past programming, learned beliefs and perceptions that aren't always correct. And those are the shoulds that I suggest you pay attention to and perhaps rethink whether we should listen to them. I'm talking about the times when we tell ourselves we should do something that may cause us to act in opposition to what our heart is telling us. I welcome you to join me and reflect on whether you too can think of times in your life when you've decided to do something because you were following the you should voice in your mind, when your heart was perhaps resisting it. As usual, a meditation follows. Feeling that you should do something comes from a place of feeling like you know what's right. I should do something because it's good for me. I should exercise today because I need to stay fit. I should eat healthy because it's good for my body, it nourishes me, and it will help me to live a healthier life. I should be kind to others because kindness makes the world a better place. These are probably all the right kinds of shoulds because they improve us and they improve the world around us. And there's another kind of should. When we use the word should for something that we instinctively decide to do, unassisted by someone asking, something we want to do because we see a need and we know that we would feel good if we did it. We know that we would help someone as well. These are situations where you just know internally this is the right decision. Often the actions that follow from those shoulds are kind, generous, and helpful to those around us. And sometimes when we tell ourselves we should do something like, I should make soup for the neighbor because they're sick. I should help that lady across the street as she seems to be struggling. I don't think any of us would question whether these are the right decisions. I think in those cases, they're things that we want to do. So the proper way to describe it may simply be, I will do this or I want to do this. Sometimes we overuse the word should because we've become accustomed to it as our own mental talk to tell us to get moving and do it. So when I talk about rethinking the shoulds that you listen to, it's not about those actions that you choose to do for your health your heart, and your soul, where the use of the word should might seem like you're resisting it because it's not something you love to do, but you know it's good for you. And it's not about those actions that you instinctively want to do for the goodness of helping someone in need or being there for someone you love. I'm talking about those things that in your heart of hearts, if you really knew how to listen to your heart, you would know you don't want to do it. But for some reason, you've convinced yourself that it's something you should do. Whether you planted this seed yourself 
based on your own programming of what you believe people expect. Or perhaps someone else planted the seed, suggesting that you do something or join in something that you really don't want to participate in. You've created some kind of expectation on yourself that you need to do this. Or maybe it's because you feel no one else will do it. But even in that case, consider your resistance to it. Because it's still possible that perhaps you shouldn't do it. You may benefit from taking the time to consider whether you've also imposed that expectation on yourself unnecessarily. And where the lines get blurry is if an opportunity comes up where you would normally want to do something, but there's just so much going on that you don't want to do it anymore, not at this time. Those are the trickier ones to decipher, because if it was another time, maybe down the road a little further, you might choose to do it without any question. But knowing what's happening in your life right now, maybe how you feel or what your schedule is like, your heart of hearts is telling you this is not something you should do. In fact, we've all heard that saying, my heart is just not in it. We often use that phrase, but I wonder if we really ever pay attention to what it's really saying. It's perhaps the purest way of saying, my heart is telling me not to do this. You could also ask yourself, if this wasn't planned right now, would I be happy about it? That may help you to discover where your heart is as well and whether you really should do something. I've been discovering that many of those shoulds are the very things that have pushed me into doing things in resistance to what my heart wanted. This can happen when you act without awareness. And when you continue to live in resistance to your heart's voice, that resistance can find a way to build inside you, affecting you. Eventually, if you continue to deny your heart's calling and act in opposition to it, opposition to your true self, you may build up emotions or pain, and you'll eventually have difficulty in understanding its cause. Sometimes it causes you to do more than you should, and you spread yourself thin and maybe become tired or even maybe ill. Other times it causes you to do something that you really probably didn't need to do, and you end up missing other beautiful moments in life. Moments that may not seem too significant at the time, but they're moments that could have created an opportunity to build or maintain a meaningful connection or a wonderful memory. One example of this is when you're feeling like you should be working. And I'm not talking about that situation where you have a deadline and you are behind. I'm talking about those times when your choice to work is self-imposed. When that you should work voice is misguided. And even if the activity you're missing seems minor, but it could be that moment of joy that the activity could bring or something meaningful, more meaningful than following the deceptive wisdom of that voice telling you you should work. We're not familiar with listening to our hearts. We've been programmed so much in believing that we know what's right, the right thing to do, that sometimes we believe the should-do messages may be coming from our heart when they're really coming from past programming that's developed over many years. We've become experts at listening to our logic, our perception of what we think we should do, learned from past experiences. But we all know that what we learn and experience doesn't always lead to truth. Much of what we believe to be true about what's expected of us, or what others will think, is often misinformed. I've recently had an experience where I was starting to go down that path of thinking, I should do something, even though my heart was telling me that it just wasn't right at the time. You see, I was invited to a get-together that was scheduled on short notice, and I was really quite busy, so I said I wouldn't be able to go. One of my friends was doing some convincing, telling me how busy their schedule was, and I started thinking to myself, well, if they can go with all of that going on, surely I should be able to go. And that's what got me thinking about this episode. Because even a year ago, I probably would have just immediately said to myself, I should go, and then I would make it work. But as I thought about it a little more, 
I realized this isn't a should that fit in the first two categories. It's not a should that serves my well-being. In fact, it might be quite the opposite. But it's also not a should that serves someone else's need. It's not a need. It's a pleasurable activity that would be nice to attend. There's no critical impact if I'm not there. So in that case, I decided to pay attention to what my heart was saying. And I decided not to go. And that example's really a pretty simple one about a very insignificant thing. But the more often you convince yourself into doing something you think you should do because others are able to do it, you'll find that your schedule can get pretty full. There are other more significant decisions I've made in my life in the past that I'm pretty sure I did because I felt I should, because I thought it would be good for me. These were times when I joined certain groups or stepped up to do certain things where the undertaking was significant and the time commitment was significant. And because I convinced myself that the experience would be good for me, even though in my heart of hearts I didn't feel quite content while I was doing it, every time I participated in one of these events, I didn't feel like I belonged. I never quite felt like I was in sync with my true heart. Yet I kept telling myself, this is good for me. One day someone asked me, why do you think you need to be doing this? And my answer was, well, I think I should because I think it would be good for me. It would give me an opportunity to learn something else and it would expand my mind. And I suppose in that particular case, I was following the should do message within my mind that was incorrectly leading me down a path inconsistent with my heart. Sometimes we become so trained by the patterns of our mind and our thinking that we almost can't find our heart's message. I find that there have been times throughout my life when I was resisting something, feeling I should do something, but by debating over whether I do it, that was my heart telling me I was resisting it. And yet often I still did it because I wasn't just ignoring my heart, but I came to realize that I don't think I knew how to hear my heart. I was no longer trained in listening to my heart. Listening to your heart and becoming practiced in thoroughly understanding the decisions of your heart versus decisions created by some belief that may not even be accurate is difficult. We've been learning how to behave, how to act in certain situations. What we think are the behaviors and actions of a good person. And we've been convincing ourselves sometimes that we should do something because we're afraid of letting someone down, afraid of saying no, afraid of some temporary judgment that others will place on us in the few moments they realize you're not there. Maybe even afraid of missing something or feeling bad about not being there. Or maybe even feeling that by choosing your heart, you're being selfish. It may take a while to sort out those times when your should message is the right one and when your should message is actually in opposition to your heart. The best way to come in tune with what your heart really wants is maybe to start to become aware of how your heart feels. To learn to listen to your heart. To start paying attention to the times when you say, I should probably do this. When you're saying you should, it often means you don't want to, but you think you should. And I remind you that sometimes our thoughts are not the place of truth. If some of this resonates with you, when you start to find that you're trying to convince yourself to do something that you don't feel like you want to do, and your answer is, I should, maybe that's the time you take a pause and you think about it a little longer. Using the word should is a sign that you're resisting it for some reason. Is this a should that serves you and your well-being and your health? Is this a should that you came up with on your own because you really want to help or do something? Or is this a should where you deep down wish 
you didn't have to do it, but you feel you should, perhaps because you feel it's expected or that no one else will step up. Perhaps even ask yourself, if this wasn't happening right now, would I be thankful and glad that I don't have to do it? So, the meditation that follows is intended to give you time to pause and think about your heart. A little talk to remind you to trust in your heart, to feel your heart, and to start to practice awareness every day when making decisions for yourself. Trust in your own heart's wisdom and be open to learning to feel your heart and to listen to it. Start to understand the difference between the shoulds that come from the heart and those false shoulds that we talked about. Now join me for this meditation. You might want to find a quiet place and make yourself comfortable. Now take a deep breath in and breathe out with a sigh. And take another. This moment, here and now, is your time to sit and be, to take a moment to experience just being here in all that you are. Let's take this time to spend with your heart, to pay attention to it, and to learn to appreciate it. This part of you that not only pumps the vital life energy through you, but that which also has the full capacity to feel, to love, and to know your truth. This heart of yours is magical. It's the source of interconnection for all of your body, your mind, and your spirit. It's the place that holds your love and your personal truth. How often do you take time to put your awareness on your heart? Take a moment now and place your hand on your heart. Feel the movement of your chest as you breathe and maybe you can feel the sensation of it pulsing carrying life through your body. Feel or hear the beat. Your heart is here for you every day. Trust in your heart. Your heart knows. So take a moment to just let it be and to listen to it. This takes practice but you can learn to know your heart's message. Let's take a few moments to listen, to focus your attention on it, and to just experience being with it in awareness. When you allow yourself to just be, you can reach that place where you are in tune with what you really feel what you feel from within your heart. You can reach a place where you know the answer to the questions that you've been asking yourself. When you allow yourself to be and to feel, you can distinguish between the feeling of what you know you need and the noise that comes from elsewhere telling you what you should do. As you continue to practice this, you will come to know your true self, devoid of all the noise created by the programming of your past. Lean into your heart. Lean into that deep wisdom that your heart knows. Listen to your heart. 
I'm here to remind you to love yourself, to listen to yourself, to allow your essence to just be. When you experience these moments in connection with your heart, you open yourself up and your heart will open and give you what it needs and you will receive all the answers, your truth to everything you've been seeking. As you sit in this space, continue to feel your presence and allow yourself to be just as you are. As you breathe in and out, listen to these words and make them your own. I am here in this moment, this moment in time, in space. I'm here with my heart, my loving, beautiful, beating heart. And I feel love within myself, love for myself. As I sit here now, I listen to my heart. I know when I listen to my beautiful heart, it will guide me always in the right direction toward my personal truth. And as I sit here now, speaking with love for who I am, and from my heart's wisdom, I say to my heart now, thank you. I'm here for you, and I'm listening to you. And when I find myself unsure about what to do, I will remind myself to take a few moments to sit with my heart and listen to what it is telling me. And the message from my heart will guide me toward my heart's direction. I trust in my heart's wisdom and I will begin a practice of becoming more aware when my heart is calling to me. And I will practice listening more and more Now take a breath in and out with a sigh. <sighs> Thank you for taking the time today to open yourself up to your heart and to reflect on how you can continue to be open. And as you do, you will become better attuned to listening and hearing the messages that come from your heart as it will always guide you in the right direction. This now ends the meditation. I hope you have a beautiful day. My wish for you is to live in positivity, health, and harmony. Thank you. If you've enjoyed the meditation component of this episode, I will be releasing it separately, so look for it over the next week or so. Thank you for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed it, I invite you to follow the show, share it, and perhaps even provide a review. You can also check me out on my Instagram at The Finding Sessions.